When you're an alcoholic and you stop, especially when you crash, you go back twice as bad as you were and you go back exactly where you stopped. Well, I was born in 1940 and I was raised uh, by uh, a very different type of mother. And I w grew up in an atmosphere where everybody drank and I thought that drinking was normal. Every movie I went to see, they had a cocktail in their hand. The first thing that people said when you knocked on the door when you went to visit was, what do you have to drink? And it's, it seemed quite normal because everybody did that. It, everybody in my circles, anyway. It was a, a lubricant for me. It was a, a stimulus, in a way. It, it put me in a mindset where I could uh, expand my thinking. A lot of the very good decisions I made were always made with a double Shiva Srigal. And I thought it was perfectly natural. This is the way things go. And when you start being a practicing alcoholic and you step over the invisible line that you don't know about because you're denying it, you start to realize how many people you're affecting because the people that are living with you are actually not living with you. They're living with a puppet that is controlled by alcoholism. Now I need this stuff to get through life and life is throwing some pretty nasty curves. With my, my first wife, mother of my children, developing Alzheimer's, I didn't know how the heck to deal with that. I really didn't. When you start to turn the page and start to realize that the Ivan Shmirnov, as I used to refer to him, is no longer your friend. He's screwing up your life a little bit. And that takes quite a while because he's been a good buddy for quite a while. So you've got to cross the line where you get rid of that and start to deal with the world with the real you that you are. Then I met my second wife who uh, in exchange for her love and, and, and support, insisted that I stop drinking. She was a smart woman. <laughs> she caught me at the end of one of my, my falls and I put myself in a treatment center for a month. And I came out uh, feeling top of the world. So I stayed sober for 16 years. It's so weird that it was not a problem all of a sudden. And like, it became a very productive part of my life. Then she died in my arms with liver cancer. Well, that wasn't fun. So where did I go to? My old friend Ivan. Guess what happened? You know, the next time I had a gig and I ordered a glass of wine or a bottle of wine, I forget. Sure enough, two months later, I was back into the, the Mickey a day and full Ivan was my friend again. When you're an alcoholic and you stop, especially when you crash, and then you go back, you go back twice as bad as you were and you go back exactly where you stopped. I finally realized that in the few years that I probably have left, I don't want to crash. And if I would have kept on drinking, I would have crashed. And that required that I get very serious and very adult and uh, get rid of the little boy in me who, who just couldn't face the fact that he had this problem. And since I've done that, I've, I've acquired, it was sort of like an epiphany, I've acquired a different value of my life and I enjoy it. So, and, and, and sometimes now, since I'm, I'm sober, I sit and I say to my partner, my ex-wife who lives with me, I'm, I'm just humming. I'm just humming with pure joy of my good health, which is remarkable after what I put it through, and the fact that I can be at peace. What excites me now very much is the effect I have on people. I can, I can turn people around, make them smile, and I know I'm helping them. I know that they feel uh, happy that they've met me. <laughs>